Hello everyone, uh, my name is Paul Nixon and I work for Find My Past and I'm the alleged military expert, which means I know everything about everything military. So you can ask me anything and I'll know the answer. Um, that's, that's of course a complete lie, but I'll do my best. I've, um, I've seen your comments coming through. Thank you very much for those. And um, I've drafted some answers. I have responded to some uh, online as well. Um, but we'll go through the questions. If you have any more questions, please do post those. Uh, I'm speaking to you live from uh, Nixon Towers in Darkest Essex. Uh, I'm in the East Wing uh, in the military section in the library and the medals room, as you can see. Um, and uh, my children have all gone out. They're delighted because I've told them all they can't have access to their broadband this afternoon because I don't want to interrupt my stream. Uh, my wife is in the garden, happily gardening. So hopefully, with a fair wind, we'll have a bit of peace and quiet for the next 30 minutes to an hour, I guess. Uh, depends how many questions come through. Uh, so thank you. Nice to see you all turning up. Um, Ivy, uh, William, Nicole, Linda, thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, let's get cracking with some questions, shall we? So in no particular order, um, the first question is from Bernadine. Uh, these are all posted on uh, on Facebook, so you can go and have a look at the, um, the original questions, and I'll just summarize. Bernadine, um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce your surname, Bernadine, but I hope you've got your first name correct. So you're asking um, about your grandfather's war records. You can't find them. His name is Bernard Joseph Clark, uh, born in Ireland. He was living in Mary Hill, uh, Glasgow, when he signed up, and he spent time in Mary Hill Barracks in Glasgow. Uh, that's in the First World War. In, first, in Second World War, he was an ARP warden and was living in Glasgow, died in 1941. Um, so uh, first things first, service records for the First World War, um, they don't all survive. Um, it's probably well known, but, I, but it's worth repeating that up to 60% of uh, records were destroyed in bombing in the Second World War. So um, you immediately uh, have the odds stacked against you. So 60% chance of not finding something. So you've got service records and pension records. Uh, they're in W363 and W364. We publish all of those uh, records. We're not holding anything back. Everything that uh, can be published on service records has been published and been published by um, uh, on, on, a, on a number of different sites. They've been out there for a while. Although with Find My Past, you'll find you've, you've got more chance of finding your ancestor because we've indexed um, lots of random pages, stray pages that appear between other in other people's service records. So you might have your grandfather's, let's say, service record. You're reading through it, and suddenly you come across what looks to be a random page with a list of uh, list of men. Might be men who are sick, uh, who are up on charges uh, for whatever reason, and more casualties. But anyway, we index those. Um, so we have the we have the most complete index of records. Anyway, um, that aside, um, if you can't find his service records. Um, if he served overseas, he'll have medals, so there will be medal records. So you can search on the medal records on Find My Past. Uh, so if you go to uh, A to Z search and type medal, you will get the um, uh, you'll you'll come to the right collection, and then and then just type his name in there. Um, as far as Second World War is concerned, and, and I'll say this now, but I'll repeat it as we go on. Um, for the most part. And of course, Second World War very much in everyone's minds as we've just had VE Day celebrations. For for the most part, all the service records for Second World War are still with the MOD. And in fact, not just the Second World War, but for men who served from 1920. So think of 1920 as a cutoff date, and it's at 1920 that regimental numbers stop and army numbers are issued instead. So that brings at least some clarity to the whole messy numbering system in the army. Army numbers introduced in 1920, and from 1920, men who are serving in the army, their service records are still with the MOD. The, the one big exception, and somebody um, will probably write in and say, no, actually, you're wrong, there's two exceptions. But anyway, the one big exception that I know is the Scots Guards, and we have the Scots Guards records. Uh, we've not published everything yet, but we've published most of the Scots Guards records. Um, so we have Scots Guards records going back to the 1800s um, up until the Second World War, um, and we've published a lot already, but there, there are more to be published. But, if you, uh, but for all other regiments, you need to write to the MOD. Um, if you go to Google or any other search engine and type Veterans UK into the search box, uh, you'll come to the MOD site. And there on that site, it's more difficult to find these days actually, is a link that will take you to the section for requesting service records. And that's where you need to go uh, for, to request a service record from the MOD. Now, like everything else um, at this point in time, uh, life is a little bit strange. Um, 
some uh, service times are slower. The MOD is saying that it's it's taking more time to recall service records and send those out. But but there is a process. It does cost thirty pounds. Uh, you will need to fill in two forms: one about yourself and one about the person you're looking for. Um, send it off to the MOD, and um, in due course they will send you what they think you should see. They won't send you everything. Parts will be redacted. Um, but they'll send you uh, what they think you should see. So, so that's that. That's First World War and Second World War. Um, more, more likes coming in. Diane, Rosie, Cindy, hello, uh, Russ, Marion, goodness, Amory, Ellen, Enid. I won't go through the whole lot. You don't want to hear that, do you? You want to hear answers to questions. So, let me go to the next one. Um, Linda Andrews. Uh, my grandfather John Powell was in the Army Service Corps. He was with horses. I know he served in France and at Gallipoli. He was awarded some silver spurs, but we did not know when or what for. And we would dearly love to find out. Okay. Um, so you've got some good clues there, actually. Um, Gallipoli is, is a big clue because uh, men who served in Gallipoli was, was, was serving there from April 1915, and the Gallipoli campaign ended with the evacuation in December 1915. So, so all the men who served in Gallipoli I qualify for the 1914-15 star. So you're looking for someone called John Powell with the Army Service Corps who uh, qualified for the 1914-15 star. So what I would do, um, using Find My Past, I go to A to Z search. I'd look for Britain Campaign Gallantry and Long Service Medals and Awards. It's a bit of a mouthful, but that's just type in. Go to A to Z search, and I use A to Z search all the time. Um, Britain Campaign Gallantry and Long Service Medals, or just type in medals and it'll find it. Um, if you type in then John Powell, there are 38 results that come up for John Powell. Um, oh, sorry, John, John Porter. Um, hang on, John Powell, John Powell. I'm, my, my apologies, Linda, John Powell. Uh, type, type in in his name, um, look, look at the results, and then it's a case of going through the medal index cards and looking for men who qualified for the 1914-15 uh, for the start. Now, at this point in time as well, um, if you go to our metal index card collection, you'll see the details index. But if you want to view the image, that you're then pointed to the National Archives, where you would normally be asked to pay uh, three pounds fifty to download a metal index card. At this point in time, uh, the National Archives has made all those metal index cards plus war diaries um, free of charge, plus everything on Discovery, as far as I know. So, um, so it's uh, Philly Boots time with the National Archives. There are uh, limits as to how much you can download on a daily or monthly basis. Uh, which is which is fair enough, but um, but but the, the limits are quite generous. So so go to the National Archives, register, and you can download the medal index cards and, and download war diaries. So uh, so that's what I would do for for that. Um, and and you'll be looking, uh, Linda, you'll be looking for medal index cards where uh, where it has as the theatre of war um, the Balkans, because uh, if he served in. Uh, Gallipoli, it'll be uh, 2B will be the theatre of war on the medal index card and it'll be the Balkans. So he served in Gallipoli, then served in France. And, and you'll just have to narrow it down that way. And once you've done that, if you've identified him on a medal index card, then check the service records on Find My Past to see if there's a service record that survives as well. So next question. Um, Gaylene Faulkner writes, um, a cousin was a prisoner of war in Stendhal, Stendhal in the First World War. Is it possible to find out about the camp? Um, yes, it, it is. I mean, there's um, there's a fantastic search engine called Google, and I use that all the time. Um, go to Google, type in Stendhal, prisoner of war camp, and you'll be amazed at what comes back. There's lots of information there that comes back for Stendhal. Um, you'll find photos as well. Um, look on uh, that well-known uh, auction house um, beginning with E and ending in Y. You'll find uh, postcards of Stendhal. Uh, try the Great War Forum. I always recommend the Great War Forum for First World War and also for the Second World War. You need to go to www2talk, World War II talk. Uh, that's the forum for the Second World War. But um, yeah, just run a basic internet search. Uh, you'll find a lot of information on there. Um, so basic internet uh, search engines uh, are, are your tools. You go to tools in this place, in this case, and the Great War Forum as well. Next question is from uh, Gerald uh, Colin O'Leary, um, asking about his grandfather, Patrick Leary. Uh, so I'll just uh, read this quickly. Patrick Leary, born 1805, and then uh, children born in, in different, um, different places, different locations, Ionian Islands in 19, 1833, and then, and then others. So the question is, how can I find out, based upon the birth of his children, which regiment he was in? and therefore get his army record. That's a, 
That's a very good question, uh, Gerald. And I, um, I, I've got various documents which I was looking at this morning. I, I don't know of an online source to, to, to find uh, where regiments were located at particular times. Um, and not, not, a, not a quick and easy uh, uh, gazetteer, if you like, of, of the different locations. I, I have that myself in, in PDFs and other documents um, which I was looking at. Um, again, Google searches might, might reveal something. I did uh, have a look uh, at my documents and for 1833, I could see that the 11th foot um, was in Zante in 1833, but it was still in Corfu in 1837 and then Canada in 1839. So that rules out that particular regiment of foot. Um, the 88th foot of uh, Connaught Rangers, latterly the Connaught Rangers was in Corfu in 1833, then in Portsmouth in 1837, and then in Templemore in Ireland in 1839. So that's, that's looking more likely, but of course those are just infantry. I mean, it's possible that he could have uh, served with artillery or, or, or another corps for that matter. Um, so it's inconclusive, uh, Gerald, for me as an answer, but uh, in terms of taking it further, uh, and I'm sure you've done this already, so but just Google searches, regiment locations, there used to be a good site called regiments.org, um, which, I, which I have a copy of um, and which I still refer to. Um, but there's also a good group on Facebook called uh, the Victorian uh, Military Society. Um, so Google that. And, and join that. It's free, of course, uh, as they all, as everything is on Facebook. Some very, very knowledgeable people on there. Uh, and although uh, 1833 is slightly, slightly predates Victoria, um, it wouldn't be amiss to to post on on that uh, forum as well. And I'm sure you get some great answers. So, um, what else do we have coming in here? Gosh, lots of lots of comments and questions coming in. Well, I'm just going to continue ploughing through what I have now. Anything I don't uh, get time to answer this afternoon, um, I'll try and get back to. So don't despair. Uh, Myrig, well, welcome. Nice to see you. Myrig Jones, now he's, a, he's an expert on the Boer War. And I know there's some Boer War questions coming up later on. So, uh, so Myrig, keep your ears pinned. I might be coming back to you later on. Uh, Nicole Hassel, I recently learned my great uncle who recently passed was in World War II, um, wondering uh, uh, what I can find out about him um, and if my other uncle was actually a POW because we have rumours that he'd been taken uh, in First Second World War as a POW. So um, so two things here, MOD again for you, uh, Nicole, because uh, the MOD will have the service records, but uh, Find My Past has an extensive collection of prisoner of war records, so do have a look at those. Um, we've got not just prisoner of war records, but casualty records as well for the Second World War and, and for the First World War. So I'm just going to have, have a look. Uh, so again, go to Find My Past, A to Z search. That's always um, a good bet. Um, and type in prisoner. Um, and you're looking for the collection, which is uh, from memory, Allied Prisoners of War 1760, I think, uh, 1780 maybe, uh, to the Second World War. There's, there's, there's a large collection. It covers, covers a huge um, area covers many nationalities as well. So, so do look at that. And uh, Diane, um, Diane Mullen, uh, my great granddad served in the First World War. He was a stoker. How do I find his rank? He was possibly medically discharged near the end of 18, 1918. How do I find his medical record? I know he was in Plymouth Hospital. And then you say, I do have his service record, basic in brackets. Well, I mean, stoker is a, is a naval rating. I, I, it's a rank, it's a rating. Um, and it was a tough, tough job. Um, if you've got the service record, then it probably says that on the service record. So, so that that is the rating. Um, and the naval service records are quite thin when you compare them to the army records. But that that is, they are what they are basically. Um, if he was medically discharged, I am I'm not sure about medical records existing for the navy. I certainly there are medical records for for the army and probably some men from the Royal Naval Division, almost certainly the Royal Naval Division will fall into that um, uh, when they were serving in France. But uh, Navy records, I'm not sure about. But again, um, check on the Great War Forum. Uh, there's the separate section for the Navy and there'll be experts on there who might be able to help you on that one. Um, and Nita Moore, looking for a photo of Second World War RAF reservists, a leading aircraftmen. I see a number of portrait photos of service people. Were these routinely taken? If so, where might I find one? Well, um, it's a good question, Anita. Um, and it's a subject very close to my heart because 
apart from um, find my past, I have a, I have my own website called British Army Ancestors, um, which links to a lot of um, find my past records. In fact, but it's a way of um, posting photos or searching for photos of men who served in the army. In this case, not the not the RAF, the army. Um, but in answer to your question specifically. Um, it wasn't part of the attestation process in, for any of the uh, forces for the First World War and the Second World War, although men did, of course, have photos taken and, and millions of photos were taken. And, uh, and, that, uh, and that's really um, my interest to, to try and put uh, faces to, to known names so that, you know, in, in 10 years time, somebody might come across a photo that somebody's posted, which is great if it's your ancestor. Um, so so it's, at the moment, it's hit and miss. Um, you stand more chance of finding a photo of your ancestor if your ancestor was an officer and, and more chance if he was a, an officer who was killed. Um, and similarly, if your ancestor was an other rank, i.e. not an officer and was killed, you stand more chance probably of finding a photo of him uh, than if he survived. So, and you can, you can improve your chances of finding photos as well. If, for instance, you blog, if you post on forums, if you set up a sim simple one-page website, for instance, there, there are various things you can do to improve your chances. But, um, but in answer to your question, the quick answer is that photos were not uh, generally part of the attestation process. Find My Past, again, has photos on Merchant Navy records. I've seen plenty of photos on Merchant Navy records, and, and I remember doing some work for somebody a while back and was really pleasantly surprised, uh, stunned and staggered and shocked to suddenly see a photo of this person appearing right before me. Um, and if my shock was uh, was something, you can imagine the shock of the person who I handed that to later on. Uh, they, they were very, very pleased indeed. So um, Amanda Dunton Charles, I've been trying to find Thomas Castleteen, my great, 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 great grandfather, born 1796. Uh, All I know is that he was a sailor, as stated on his daughter's marriage certificate. Where do I start looking? So again, um, uh, I looked for this. I looked for you, Amanda. I couldn't find anything, actually. But I, but, it, but my process was looking for naval records, doing the A to Z search, again, on Find My Past, looking for uh, British Royal Navy and Royal Marines service and pension records, 1704 to 1919. And again, A to Z search, just type in any, any of those words, Royal Marines uh, or Royal Navy, and then the results will appear. You don't need to type in the whole lot, but just, just some of those key words, and the, and the records will come up. Um, as I say, I didn't find anything for him, and the name is unusual, isn't it? It's not. It's not a common name. There, there were some Castle Teens there. Um, it was James Castle Teen I found. Um, no Thomas Castle Teen, unfortunately. Um, but um, and I was surprised not to find anything. I think. I, I mean, I would advise you to look at the. Uh, National Archives website because that has some useful links on there. Useful links to uh, Greenwich. Uh, pensions as well. It's possibly something there. Um, so so go to the National Archives and then you're looking for Royal Navy ratings pensions 17th to 20th centuries. Um, if Audrey Collins is listening in on this one, as she often does, uh, Audrey from the National Archives, then please uh, post a comment there as well, Audrey, if, if applicable. So uh, next uh, one, as we plough relentlessly through the uh, questions, and thank you for all the questions, they're fantastic, really. Um, Rosemary Mitchell, how and where can I get replacement for my grandfather's war medals and his army records, please? Well, um, uh, I, I checked this as well for you. I mean, there's plenty of commercial sites that, where you can buy medals, um, and I wouldn't recommend anyone in particular. I've never used any of them. Um, and for that matter, I haven't used the MOD either, but you can obtain um, duplicate medals from the MOD, if, particularly if medals are lost, I think. You can probably get medals from the MOD. Uh, but but just, again, type in MOD medals, and you'll come to a .gov website um, where, where you can then follow the, follow the instructions on there. Um, in terms of uh, army records, which, which war are we talking about, Rosemary? Are we talking about the First War or Second War? Because... Second War, as I say, MOD, uh, uh, it should go to place unless it's Scots Guards and then it's Find My Past. Um, but for the First World War, um, the service records, everything that is available has been published. Um, so if you, if you don't find the records on Find My Past, then uh, the likelihood is that they were destroyed in bombing in, in the Second World War. Uh, that's just unfortunate, but that's, that's the way it is. Right, Alison Clark, you're next. Um, Second World War, Jane Elizabeth Davison disappeared during the First World War. Um, that was the last time I, we saw, anyone saw her. Again, MOD uh, for you, Alison, um, with, with the details. Follow the instructions, Veterans UK website, and uh, then uh, follow the instructions and, and write to them. 
Heather Kirkhope, my grandfather was a stretcher bearer in First World War, who was also a miner. Would he have stayed underground until the battles were over and then come up and do his stretcher bearer duties, possibly having dug the tunnels for the ammunition dumps? Unlikely, Heather. Um, largely depends which regiment he was in. I think, again, what I would do, uh, were I in your shoes, I would be looking for his First World War Medal Index card. And um, then I'd check to see if there's a service record and, and check the war diaries. So, so I mean, he could could be with the Royal Engineers if he was a tunneler uh, in a tunneling company, potentially. Um, so, so find out the unit he served with first. Do your homework on the unit. Um, read the war diaries, and then, uh, if necessary, uh, again go to the Great War Forum. Get in, get involved in the Great War Forum. There's plenty of experts on there who would uh, like nothing better than to help you. I'm sure. Uh, Sasha, Elsie, how do I find the enlistment date for a post-1903 soldier in the Seaforth Highlanders? I've looked several times in the hope might some, something might turn up. We have one service record from India, Delhi Durbar, and some First World War records. From First World War, were any medical records of soldiers evacuated through injury retained, or were they lost in the Second World War? For example, we know a relative was evacuated via a South African field ambulance, but not what happened after that. Finally, what records exist for soldiers who left the army? post world war one okay so how do i find the enlistment date for a post 1903 soldier okay um well you can do you can do the do, do the uh, testing the searching on find my past or you can go to another one of my blogs uh which is called army service numbers 1881 to 1918 and on that i've published details of regimental numbers and when they were issued for all line infantry regiments all cavalry all yeomanry uh, and some other units as well um, it's uh, free to use, um, but and the and the records, the information there was compiled by looking at service records on Find My Past. So, so the idea is that uh, numbers, regimental numbers, are issued sequentially. So let's uh, in 1881, uh, when the regiments of foot become uh, the county regiments. So the first regiment of foot uh, becomes the Royal Scots, and the second regiment of foot becomes the Queen's Royal West, West Surrey, and so on and so forth. In July 1881, when that happens. The regiments, most of them, of course, there's always an exception, the Rifle Brigade didn't, but most of the regiments started numbering from one. And then, so I'm the first one up, I get number one, and then the person behind me gets number two. And those number sequences carried on throughout time, really, up until 1920 um, for, for these regiments. And they get to a certain point, get to 9999, and then have to apply for it to, to start a new series of numbers, and then a new series would start. And then later on that, uh, limit of number was numbers was extended. So, so there's method to the madness, but it, but it's possible to work out, and I have worked out um, because I am a military history nerd after all, and an expert who knows everything. Um, I have worked out when numbers are issued, and that's what I posted on the blog. But you can do that yourself, for instance, on on Find My Past. You can uh, the the search on Find My Past is extremely flexible. Um, so you can type in a number or start typing in a number. Use the wildcard, um, put the regiment name in as well hit the search and then you'll see all the numbers that appear. So to give you a simple example, if you go to if you're looking for an Essex regiment um, person, let's say your let's say for argument's sake, your ancestor served in the Essex regiment, which is my local regiment, and he had the number one, two, three, four, but that service record is one of the ones that was destroyed. So you, so there's no record for him. But you still want to know when he enlisted. So you go to find my past and you think, okay, well if I know the numbers were all issued sequentially, uh, let me try uh, and see if the record survives for 1233 or 1235. Um, and you go to find my past, and rather than typing in 1233 and then 1235, you think, okay, well, I'll just see, let me search a range. So you go, you go to the website, British Army Service Records, on find my past, type Essex and then a wild card, and then you type 123 and a wild card, and that will bring you up all the records for Essex Regiment beginning with 123. And what you're looking for is those records that are 123. Three, one, two, three, five, one, two, three, two, etc. And and when you find those, look at when the number was uh, issued. Look at when the man attested. Look at when he joined the uh, regiment at the depot. And it's that date of joining the depot is when the number was issued. When he presents himself at the table and and he's uh, signing off um, and being subsequently issued with uh, kit, uh, that's when his number is issued. And so if you know when uh, one, two, three. Two was issued, and you know when one, two, three, five was issued. Then you know when one, two, three, four was issued. It's as simple as that. And that's the theory. Okay, so you can do that yourself, and it's good fun. Um, but you can save yourself some legwork by going to my Army Service Numbers blog. That's up to you. Um, but but my blog is only just—it's a snapshot, really. You'll find all the detail on Find My Past. So um, so that's the first part of that, uh, Sasha. The second part we have. Um, 
medical records. We Find My Past publishes medical records in MH106, uh, which are um, we pretty much publish all of those records now. We were releasing them um, according to the 100 year rule, which was uh, soldiers, we, we were not allowed put to publish records if they were less than 100 years since the casualty had had occurred. But we're now 2020, aren't we? And, and the First World War finished in 1918. So I'm pretty sure we've published all of those records from MH106. Um, what survives in MH106 is just a fraction of what was originally generated, those uh, that whole series was supposed to be destroyed after the war, but some records were, were kept as samples. And so and so that's what that's what we publish. Um, so so there are some records in MH106. Um, and then finally, your question about uh, post-World War One, well, that's back to the dear old MOD as well, I'm afraid. So uh, 1920, if he's serving in the army in 1920, so you could serve right throughout the First World War and then um, continue to serve post-1920, and if that is the case, those records will still be with the MOD. All right, uh, let's have a look. Gosh, so many questions going through. Um, I'm not going to have time to go through all of these, but there's plenty coming through. And whoever posted that link to my website, my blog, thank you very much. Uh, first, find my past, my colleague Noel, thank you. British Army ancestors, British Army soldier photographs, and that is my uh, grand, grand, great-grandmother's um, brother, Bert Elam there, who's the who's the soldier uh, on that picture. Right, um, as we plow on, uh, right. Seramos, uh, my grandfather was a staff car driver in the ASC. Um, gosh, Sarah, I mean, you've got lots of information there, haven't you, about this? This is anecdotal information about your grandfather who um, supposedly uh, was involved or, or, or drove a staff car for people when the armistice was signed in the wood. It all sounds very plausible, doesn't it? But the answer is uh, that I don't, if you can't find his service record and um, there's no uh, war diary, then it'd be very difficult to prove that, I think. But again, uh, you know, there's, there's bound to be an expert on the Great War Forum who, who's uh, an expert in the ASC or in that particular part of the war. So I would say um, beat a path to their door. Um, it's tricky. I mean, I think... I love the I love the war diaries. I, I love studying the First World War and 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 pre First World War. I'm not an expert on the Army Service Corps. It's still a it's still largely a mystery to me, and, and certainly the, the regimental numbering bit is a mystery as well. Um, the diaries that survive are incomplete as well for the ASC as they are for the Labour Corps. Both the, both those corps are quite can be quite difficult to research. Uh, Sally Ann McDuff, I posted uh, to you that you need to check with the MOD for the for the uh, Royal Navy, your Royal Navy ancestor. Um, and Tina Anderson, uh, you you were asking about your relative Andrew Conboy, who was born in Ireland in 1825. The only record you could find was that he served for the 22nd Regiment of Foot. Um, he died in Calabria in 1849. Is there any way of finding out more details from Army Service records? Um, unfortunately not. Um, what happens with uh, soldiers who die in service um, or shortly thereafter, uh, the records were destroyed by the Ministry of Pensions. There was no, there was no thought, of course, in those days that uh, anybody could possibly be remotely interested in ancestors' military service or any other aspect of their ancestors' personal lives. And so there was no reason to to retain service records, and so they were destroyed. If a soldier died, uh, his record was destroyed. So, I mean, you will find records, um, as you've identified, in, in our British India office collection, and that's well worth looking at, um, because there are plenty of baptism records, marriage records, and burial records in India, and the, the churchyards and graveyards of India are still littered with the... Um, the British settlers from the 1700s and 1800s. Um, the, the, the climate was cruel and, and it, it, it weeded the uh, Anglo population out quite quite thoroughly. Um, but in terms of military records that survive, I, th I think not. Um, he's a little early for uh, embarkation lists, but the British Library, if anyone's interested, does have embarkation lists for, for regiments going across to India in from I think from memory um, about 1873 to the late 1880s um, which I have photographed actually I have my own copies of those um, but they're not available anywhere online um, although they're, they're extremely useful um, but, but again that's out of your particular sphere of interest Tina it's a bit later than, than you're interested in so I think actually what you've done is correct um, I don't think there will be a record for him as he died but again um, 
there used to be a fantastic forum called the Victorian Wars Forum, which is uh, sadly deceased. Um, but try the Victorian Military Society on Facebook. Um, potentially, there could be something there. Judith Hanley. Um, hi, my second great grandfather was born in 1858. Uh, he was in the Army Service Corps as a driver. He disappeared, leaving a wife and two children, never to be seen or heard of again. The CAD. Is there any way of finding? That was my uh, interjection rather than yours, Judith. Is there any way of finding out any information from Army records? Well, um, you'll need to check the service records on Find My Past again, uh, Judith. So he will. Uh, so, so just run a simple search. Um, Again, put variations of his name in there. Use use that wild card. I, I can't stress how important it is to use the wild card, and and you can throw that wild card in wherever you like. It's extremely flexible, a flexible way of searching, an essential way of searching. And uh, find my past. You, of course, I'm going to say that is the best site to to use the wild card on. There, there, are, there are no other site has the flexibility of search that find my past does, uh, in my experience, um, and I use it all the time. Uh, Sandra McLeod, my husband's five times great grandfather, William McLeod, uh, joined the uh, from Banffshire, joined the fifty third regiment of foot, um, which was a sh later Shropshire light infantry. So the question is, how did someone from Moray end up in a Shropshire regiment? Well, that's a very good point, uh, Sandra, and and the reason is that um, he was probably persuaded by a, a persuasive recruiting sergeant who may have taken him into a pub and, and given him a few beers and then signed him up sharpish before he sobered up. Um, men could join, men didn't have to join a local regiment. Um, regiments were encouraged to recruit locally, but of course for some regiments uh, it was difficult. Um, so the border regiment, for instance, and I've posted about this on one of my uh, blogs some, some while ago now, I, I looked at enlistment dates in the border regiment, albeit a good deal later. This was in um, 1903, I think. Um, there's, a, there's a whole pattern of men joining the border, border regiment who lived in Stratford in London, and it's probably because, again, either the border regiment happened to be passing through and there was a big recruiting drive at the time, um, or they were persuaded by a recruiting sergeant who was in the area. Um, so I would say the same happens uh, with your ancestor as well. Uh, I mean, for that matter, he, he could have been wandering, could have been working in Shropshire, potentially, um, but it's not unusual. Um, it's, not, it's not a given that somebody living in in Shropshire would join the Shropshire Light Infantry, they could just as join, uh, easily join another regiment and conversely uh, somebody living in Morayshire might not necessarily join the local Scottish regiment, they could join any regiment they, they uh, so, so chose. Um, Bernadette Maguire and um, Magella, is it? Uh, Fitzpatrick, uh, your question was about, they were both about Second World War, Royal Artillery, Frederick Green. So Bernadette, um, I mean, the, the, the short answer again is for you for service records is MOD, but Find My Past publishes, does publish a lot of records for the Royal Artillery. So we publish enlistment registers for the Royal Artillery. Um, we publish casualty cards for the Royal Artillery. Um, casualties as in death. So, you, so the fact that you mentioned he was injured um, probably won't appear in the Royal Artillery records, but, uh, but don't forget the newspapers. Uh, the newspapers publish casualty lists. If you've uh, if, if we've got those particular years. Um, but for the service records, as I say, for all service records, 1920 onwards, um, it's the MOD. And go to Google Veterans UK is what you need to Google for, search for. Patricia Hindman, how do I find a regiment and numbers for two people? First of all, most likely Royal Scots, both survived. Also, where would I find the absent voters role? Leith and Edinburgh. Um, I can't help you on the absent voters. I'm not sure. Um, we publish a lot of absent voters records. I'm not sure about Leith and Edinburgh. And I did do some Googling beforehand. I didn't come up with much. There's nothing. You won't find it in uh, on Scotland's people. Um, they are very clear on their website, uh, or the National Library for Scotland, rather. They're very clear that they don't hold those records there. Um, how do I find regiment and numbers for two people, First World War? So. Well, you, it, it's a tricky one, really. I mean, it's less tricky if if those people share your surname, less tricky than if it was um, uh, Bell or, 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 or Smith, for instance, or Robertson. Um, you're always going to be up against it. If you don't know the regiment, don't know the number, but just have a name, it's going to, it's going to be very tricky to find, and le unless you're unless the name you're looking for is an odd name, like Castleteen, the name we mentioned earlier. Um, so the trick is to try and I would say go back to the family try and find out anecdotal information about those people you know were they 
did they fight on the Somme? Did they fight in Gallipoli? Gallipoli is a great, great uh, clue. Were they regular soldiers? So all those clues can help you uh, in narrowing down the person's regimental number, um, because as I say, numbers were issued sequentially. So if you know when um, certain numbers were issued, you can rule out uh, numbers because they were too early, or and you can rule out people who you find in service record searches who subsequently died. So there's a lot of detective work uh, you, you can do, uh, but you will be up against it without that. And you may not actually uh, come up with a conclusive result. You might just uh, have several possibilities, which you should just put by and park until you get some other information. So so it will be tricky. Um, you've got Royal Scots is, uh, as a potential regiment. Um, so that was a local regiment for Edinburgh, of course. So so use that as the first, as your first uh, first option. So once you've done the search and got those names and got the results for Royal Scots, then explore a little little more to see if you'll find them on um, in the service records collection that we have. Nigel Hartley, um, you asked. My great uncle served in the ASC and was killed on 10th of August 1918 in the Battle of Amiens, in an incident where his unit was attacked by German aircraft uh, and men and horses were killed. Um, You've done your homework, Neil, by the sounds of things. No, Nigel, you've done, by the sounds of things. Um, you've looked at the diary. You've learned something from the AC war diary, but you want to research in depth what sources should you explore, both British and German. Uh, gosh, that's a tough one. Um, I mean, uh, I think, again, first uh, Great War Forum, honestly speaking. Um, you you may have gone as far as you can go if you've got the war diary as well, but I would say uh, probably Great War Forum is your next uh, port of call. So those were the questions I had written down that I gathered before uh, before this broadcast started. And I'm now going to go through some of the ones on Facebook. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to take a sip of water. So bear with me for one tick. Gosh, what a fun, uh, fun way to spend an afternoon. Chris Lang, nice to see you there. Thank you for your comments. Regular, Chris is a regular. Um, Dave Smith. Now, I haven't prepped any of these, so let's, so you're going to catch me out, someone, I'm sure. Dave Smith, I've heard that my grandfather was some sort of air raid. Was some sort of air raid shelter in Second World War in Morden, Surrey. Who might have records of this, please? Is it the MOD or local authority? Um, I, well, it will be the MOD, I would think, but also check the, uh, the local record office, um, Dave. Um, they, there might be something there. And Chris Lang, you responded to that as well, didn't you? Check the hospital database on National Archives site and also check Plymouth Archives. Uh, Plymouth, maybe that was a response to a different question. Um, my uncle died of his wounds in Tunisia, 1943. That's from Sue Kirkman. How do I get his medical records? Well, um, again, 1943, Second, uh, Second World War, Sue. So, so MOD is a place for you. Let me go up here. 101 comments, that's pretty good. Thank you, people, for, for responding. Yeah, Heather Nichols. Um, that's done that one. You could ask Surrey History Centre, which was my suggestion. Yeah, we're very friendly with Surrey. We just digitised um, all the Surrey Parish records, actually, which will be which we've published. Um, Megan Ravenhill. I was hoping to find out more about Colonel Philip Ravenhill, commanding Royal Engineers Gibraltar in 1840, 1884. How do I find more about what he was doing during that time? How do I find out what he was doing in the Crimean War? He was a Royal Engineer in battles of Alma, Inkerman, and Siege of Sebastopol. Um, uh, we're good friends with the Royal Engineers down at um, Chatham. Um, and in fact, we were about to digitize Second World War Royal Engineers records uh, when the coronavirus um, crisis took hold. So that's all been put on hold for now, but, uh, but that will be coming. But, but I would suggest speaking to the Royal Engineers um, yeah, yeah. I would speak to the Royal Engineers, also Victorian um, Military Society on Facebook. Uh, you'd really need to know the 
the unit he was serving within the Crimean War to understand fully exactly uh, what his role was there. But if he was a, a colonel, uh, there, there should be some information on him. I mean, you've, you've obviously tried Google searches. I'm sure you'll find something on, on Google as well, but, um, but definitely try the Royal Engineers archive. I believe some of their staff have been furloughed, however, for the time being. Um, if I'm Wilson, love to know more about my dad's family. Came from Grassmarket, Edinburgh, late 1800s. Uh, Find my past has service records, as say, early service records from the 1790s onwards. Bev Ward, my dad was in the Intelligence Corps in the Army, died many years ago. Can't find anything on him. Well, again, it's the same, same problem with. Um, service records not surviving probably Bev um, if he served overseas there will be metal records for him so that would be the place to look at the metal records Ian, Ian Martin uh, can I find out where my grandfather was killed about 1916-18 family folklore said he was shot at Verdun however his grave is about 70 miles away in Avile which was a field hospital near Albert or Albert um, Commonwealth War Graves uh, will have information about the about the uh, date of death um, and the regiment details as well, of course. And so again, look for the regimental diary for, for him, uh, Ian. Uh, the as, as I mentioned earlier, there are uh, those diaries are, are freely available currently on uh, the National Archives. Our partners, the National Archives, have made those free of charge, so that, that's great. Uh, and the diaries are really, really useful. Uh, where can I find info about my grandfather who entered the US in Newport, Virginia on 3rd of December 1919? I'm not sure, Josephine, but I will ask my colleague in America, Jen Baldwin, and she may well know the answer to that one. Um, Peggy Daly, hello from South Africa. Does Find My Past have any records for the South African troops in the First World War in German Southwest Africa and or German East Africa? Um, no. Peggy, we don't, unfortunately. Uh, we have very few South African records. Uh, I'd love to have more of them, but no, we don't have any for, for South Africa. Right, uh, Dorna uh, Coppin, my German, my German great grandfather was rounded up as an alien on 26th of September 1914. IRC records just have a single reg card with no details. That's the International Red Cross, I think. Um, International Committee of the Red Cross had just have a single reg card with no details. I believe he was sent to York and then to an internment camp. He survived the war, but I have no idea where he went apart from a vague story about going to Argentina. How can I trace him? Um, that's a good question, um, and I don't know the answer. I'll have to think on that and come back to you, Dorna, and ask some colleagues on that one. Yes, my my great uncle's uh, wife was an alien as well, and her or her, and her family uh, they were they were Germans. Um, yeah, I've been researching my great grandmother's first husband. He died in France in 1916. Royal Scots, obviously, no relation to me. But if he wasn't killed, I wouldn't be here. He may not be blood, but his family, yeah. Good point, Diana. Diane. My boys just come back. Hello, boys. Good time playing football. So I knew it was too good to be uh, too good to be true when I said it'd be undisturbed for the net for the hour. Right. Any more questions coming in for anybody? Angie King, I have my grandfather's war records. Everything on it's correct, apart from his next of kin. He's put down a different mother's name. Any ideas? As I've never heard of her. Um, I don't know, Angie. I've got my grandfather's war records. Everything on it correct. Next of kin. 
No, I mean we're 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 rather dependent on what people have, have recorded. I mean, check other records to see. Um, I mean, presume it's just, it's the right person you're looking at. Check other records as well to see um, uh, whether that tallies. Or from what you say, it doesn't tally. I I can't explain it. I mean, there are different reasons that people write things down on forms at different times. So, uh, so I'm not sure what to what to think about that one. And Ben, Bernardin, uh, you've just uh, come in, I can see, saying, sorry, you missed the start of this. Did I find anything? What did I say to you, Bernardin? Hang on, let's have a look. Uh, metal index cards, I suggested looking at metal index cards for you. Um, this is, uh, jo Bernard Joseph Clark, born in Ireland, living in Mary Hill bar Barracks. So for the First World War, look for the metal index cards. Try to find him on metal index cards. For the Second World War, when he was an ARP warden, and living in Glasgow, um, the MOD may have something on his ARP warden service. So, so yes, as, as general rules uh, for service records, um, before we end this broadcast, um, Second World War service records, apart from Scots Guards, you need to go to the MOD, full stop. Uh, at some point in time, those records will no doubt be accessioned by the National Archives, but at the moment they're with the MOD and you need to go through the MOD for Second World War records. For First World War, First World War records, um, there's nothing being withheld. Everything that can be published is being published, uh, or has, has been published rather. Um, there's there's nothing that we're, we're waiting to to publish. Everything that's out there uh, is out there. It's published. Um, if service records don't survive, and these are all general general points. If service records don't survive for the First World War, provided your ancestors served overseas, uh, there will be metal records. Um, and you'll find those, you'll be able to access those or find my past. And, and whilst the metal record is not um, the same as a service record, of course, you're going to get some crucial information on that metal index card about, about the service. You might get the time that he served overseas. You'll get the time, uh, you'll get his regimental number, which will tell you when he joined up. Um, and from that, you'll be able to... Um, uh, if, if you know the unit, you'll be able to then look at the war diaries, which, as I say, you can download at the moment free of charge uh, from Find My Part from uh, the National Archives. It, as I said earlier, as well, if you don't have a service record, you can do some detective work and find out, looking at his number um, and looking at other people's numbers, work out exactly when he would have joined the army or, or when he would have joined that particular record. So uh, regiment, rather, not record. Um, so. Knowing that, uh, if you look at other records and work out or we'll see what those people did, that's a good indication of what your own ancestor might have done as well. So, 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 so use that. Use the records um, and then look at the war diaries because a service record will tell you. Oh, it's a mango. Thank you very much. My oldest son just brought me some mango. I shan't be able to eat that just now, Mark. But anyway, when I'm done. Um, yeah. So, uh, so the service records will won't tell you the nitty-gritty of what the man was doing, but um, but the, the war diaries will. The war diaries give very detailed information about the, um, the what the unit was doing at any one point in time, and so they're definitely well worth reading. It's unlikely often that the, the, the ancestor will get a mention. Officers are generally named. Sometimes casualties are named. Sometimes award winners are named as well, medal award winners, but often the people aren't named. But it's still worth checking because sometimes they are, um, and I've found, I've found men who are mentioned. Um, often you find territorial units who are out there um, starting well, starting very enthusiastically, and they and they go out and they have casualties, and they um, uh, they record all those casualties on uh, in the war diary. So it's definitely worth checking. Um, so so by hook or by crook, you, you can get there, or you can get to a version of the truth anyway. Um, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, service records, uh, for the most part, do not survive. 60% destroyed. But, you know, you never know. You, you can strike it lucky. And I've found records where uh, so the attestation forms were completed in duplicate when a man joined the army. And I have uh, an example of a man called Charles Sabaran from the East Surrey Regiment, captured on the 23rd of August 1914, lost his leg. Um, he, his service records survive in W0364 and W0363. So, so you have the burnt documents and you have the pension documents as well. Um, so do your homework. Uh, use Find My Past. Use the search. Use the search. Uh, use that wildcard search to, to um, really make the most of your searches. Um, and do get used to it. I, I can't recommend that highly enough. And I think that will probably 
just about do me. I will go through um, the questions though in due course, and um, and I'll, if I can answer anything, I, I I will get back to you more fully. There's a couple more actually. Let me just do that while I'm here. Joe Ledger, please, could you help with the Salonica records in 1918? I know my great granddad's service number six two three one zero served in the PF, was wounded, then went to Salonica 1918 rather than back to the Western Front. Um, have unit diaries for 1914 to 1917. I would love to know more about his 1918 experience. Um, Great War Forum, beat, beat a path to their door. Um, Salonica diary is not digitized um, and not online for the most part, as far as I know, but they, they probably are extant at National Archives. So once that reopens, you'll be able to have a look there. Um, but for the time being, I would say with the information you have already you got, you again, Joe, seem to have done a lot of homework on this. Uh, go go back to the National Archives uh, uh, in due course and also the Great War Forum. Um, Mandy Graham Fleming, my grandfather, Andrew McCartney, served in the First World War, became a policeman in Perth and joined the British uh, Army of the Rhine, is that? Uh, policing West Germany in 1949, but died. His death certificate said heart failure. But we were told he's accidentally shot. So I cannot f find anything to prove this. And why in pencil? Well, good point. Why indeed? Um, but again, it's 1949, Mandy. So so it's the MOD for you, I'm afraid. Um, but they're very, they're very helpful. They're very efficient. Um, uh, but as I say, they're, they're also... Um, slightly hamstrung at the moment with coronavirus um, restrictions. Where can I find regiment records for Royal Armoured Corps? Is that Eddie Fitzpatrick? Um, I, again, um, Royal Armoured Corps is um, post-1920, so MOD for that, for you. And I think that will probably do me for now. Um, so thank you for your time. Uh, it's been great to doing this, and I hope it was okay. Um, I'm always happy to answer military questions. As I say, I am an expert, allegedly. I do know everything about everything, allegedly. Um, so, um, so thank you. Thanks for the questions. Keep them coming. I will. I will go through these, as I say, and answer where I can. And um, I wish you all a very healthy rest of the day and stay safe.